And you know I was New York's finest. I was a cop just like you. But I'm gonna get the answers I need. I'm your first call when you find this fucking guy. Who the fuck is Felicia? Fucked up. This is all still fixable, but if you kill a cop, it is gonna get much worse for you. Welcome to the fucking team. What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. In this video, I'll be talking about happenings in episode 7, starting with Tate and his next move concerning his brother's death, the mistake Carter made with regards to Tate's initial conversation, and the blowback on Carter. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's get straight into the topics. From the way Tate was looking at Detective Carter, there is no way he believes that this guy took his brother out just like that. Therefore, my breakdown will start from Carter and Tate. Now, Carter made a mistake by establishing to Tate that his wife was also gunned down just like his brother. For me, this was the moment Carter exposed himself for Tate not to trust him if he does something contrary to what they both agreed. Tate then responded to him immediately that then he knows why he needs to find whoever did this to his brother. So conclusively, in Tate's point of view, Carter faced similar situation with his wife, hence he should know and understand what it means to him Tate as well to find the killer of his brother. This also suggests that Carter should be keen on finding Kamal's killer and one, he better be sure it is the right person and two, he must inform Tate about any leads so that he can also get some closure. This also means that whoever Carter will bring to Tate as his brother's killer must be worth it. Now, Tate knows his brother very well and his expertise. If you remember in the original Power where we had Tate's point of view episode, Kamal took out the goon son that Rashad hired to kill Ghost at the gunpoint. That scene was one of the most dangerous scenes because the guy could have pulled the trigger on Rashad as a form of reflex when Kamal shot him. But this act alone shows that Kamal was very skillful and good at his job. That is not all. At some point, Rashad wanted his brother to be the head of his security when he becomes the governor to which Kamal declines. This in effect should tell you that Kamal Tate is not just any officer who can be gunned down by some crackhead Russian. And this is what Carter doesn't know about Kamal Tate. Now, Rashad made a statement to Carter which he should have considered and that is, he was once New York finest, which means that he, Rashad Tate, was one of the best cop just like him. And you know I was New York's finest, I was a cop just like you. We can all agree that even though Tate is no longer a police officer, his skills never left his body. He has the ability to sense if someone is lying, if someone is guilty of something, and if someone knows something but is hiding it. And I can give a lot of examples even with Ghost. When Ghost made Alphonse, Spanky, 2-Bit and Co robbed them during the fundraiser at Truth. Not to forget the countless time he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tariq and all that. So trust me, we might think Carter is someone that shouldn't be messed with, but believe me, Rashad Tate is someone Carter shouldn't mess up with. Now let's analyze their scene and conversation thoroughly. Carter's first lie was about the fact that the murder was tied to a bus that they made on the Russian's drug warehouse. Binary ballistics tied the murder to a bus we made on a Russian drug warehouse. And what did Tate ask him? Retaliation? Retaliation? Now, that was the first cue. If you know any drug dealers, especially Russians, you know that the last thing they want to do is to retaliate, especially on the police, simply because they raided their space. No reasonable drug dealer would want to add the death of a cop to his list of crimes. Now, this is where Carter first gave himself up to Tate. And you can tell that since the killing of Kamal Tate, Carter has been very stressed and can't seem to focus and think smart. Now, after his statement that Kamal was a good cop, Tate gave him a look and one instruction, which is, I'm your first call when you find this fucking guy. And he reiterated, your very first call. Now from here, what happened? Carter hastily located the remaining Russians, smoked one of them out who doesn't even look like someone who could kill an ant, then framed him with the same gun he used to kill Kamal. He then requested for forensic to come to the scene and this is where Nico starts to also suspect Carter himself. Now Tate was invited for viewing of the body of his supposed brother's killer. Now this is where Carter exposed himself to Tate the more. If you remember, Ted told him that if he hears anything, he should contact him first, but he failed to do that. Why? Because if Ted were to meet this guy alive, he will know for sure that such a character cannot roll up on his brother, talk less of killing him. Maybe he would have even noticed that this guy can't even pull a trigger, which would have left Carter very suspicious to Tate. Why do I even say this move made it worse for Carter? Now, if you take a close look at Tate's body language, he was just playing along with Carter for him to believe he actually believes this guy killed his brother. Just look at Tate, right there. The way he was looking at Carter from the corner of his eyes, 
it is evident that Tate doesn't believe any word coming out of his mouth. And from here, I think Tate is going to do his own investigation to find the killer. If you remember what Lorenzo did in the case of Zig by bringing a different person to Monet to kill, this is the same thing Carter has done with Tate, but only that he brought a dead person to Tate. So trust me, this issue will circle back to Carter and Tate will gladly put bullet in Carter's head. Only that the remaining episodes might take away a lot of details. Now there is one thing about Tate. It's like a trait that he always exhibits if he doesn't trust you and what you are saying and deep down he is about to mess you up. Tate will always keep a sarcastic smiley face and mostly use the phrase which is my good brother. My door is always open to you, my good brother. He equally referred to Ghost the same way when they were having issues with the QCP project, thinking that he was going to mess Ghost up by even bringing Dre on board, only for Ghost to make a different move in his favor. And at the end, Ghost equally referred to him as my good brother, with the same sarcasm Tate initially gave him. I'll see you tonight, my good brother. He equally said the same thing to Tariq. Now, there is a word play here and I want you to pay close attention to it. I see why my brother chose this unit, detective. Nice work. Tate said, I see why my brother chose this unit. Now, this statement isn't a compliment, but rather Tate noticed that there is something dirty about Carter's unit. That was why his brother chose to be there. And from all indications, like I said, Tate is just playing along with Carter for him not to read his mind or see him coming. But I can tell you on authority that Tate suspects professionals took his brother out because of some debt he has seen and became a loose end. Hence him saying, I see why my brother chose this unit. We all know Kamal will never dirty himself in line of duty and will never condone any wrongdoing. Kamal will rather die than go dirty and Tate knows that only something big within the task force that can expose his brother to such gruesome murder. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. But for me, Tate's action shows that he suspects Carter. And possibly, there could be some broad codes between the Tate brothers that might conflict every lie Carter is telling Rashad. But drop your thoughts and theories in the comment section. Let's discuss. Now moving on, in my last video, I stated that Diana's baby is gone and there is no way the writers will want to give us another baby St. Patrick who will end up shooting his father again one day. I was even responding to someone in the comment section that we will petition stars if the baby survives in the next episode after that beating. But anyways, that was a sad one for Diana and Tariq. But yes, Felicia had it coming for sure, only that her son became a twist in the whole mood. Right now, we don't even know if we should be happy or sad that Diana of a mother from her son. But that's the consequences of Felicia's actions. I can't tell you how I feel about this, but let me know what you also feel about this in the comment section below. Now, in episode 6, when Tariq was about to give the headshot to Zion, he made a statement by saying, and I quote, so Carter recruit you both. Very soon, he'll own you like he owned me. Carter recruited y'all too. And he'll own you like he owned me. Tariq and Braden didn't seem to understand why he said so, but they killed him anyways. Now, back to episode 7. Tariq seemed to now realize what Zion said before he killed him. You can see the shock and the anger in Tariq's face when he realized how dirty Carter is and where he has landed himself now. And from the moment he told Tariq welcome to the team, it all makes sense to Tariq now. I'll be going deep into this conversation in my next video but finally, let's talk about Drew. His move to tell Carter the truth was quite dangerous but I think he did the right thing for this moment. But mind you, Drew is moving with a different agenda here. He wants his family to be free from Carter and at the same time, he wants to be at a certain level. And I feel Drew is trying to be at the good side of Carter so he can earn his trust even if it's just a bit. Because now Felicia is gone and Carter and Nico cannot do the dirty things alone. So Drew can be a good replacement for Felicia. Now potentially, if this decision doesn't sit well with Nico on how Drew is suddenly part of the team and more closer to Carter, we might see some conflict and betrayals popping up left, right, center. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.